Have you ever experienced the fear of a blank page in a brand new journal that you never, never actually touched? Or maybe receiving some supplies for a new art project or a craft project and just being so intimidated by those supplies because it seems like a lot of work to get to know them, to experiment, to actually start the project. You spend all that time doing research online. You find the best supplies, being those paints, papers, a new notebook, a new journal, or in my case, new tarot cards. And you get them and you're afraid to use them. So in this video, I'll do my best to explain what I do to get over the fear of a new deck, new to me. Uh, I received this one a couple of days ago and for the first two days it just sat on my shelf. And I was like, oh my god, it's so beautiful, I want to play, but it's so much work. Getting to know a new deck is so much work. It's 78 cards, where well, in this deck it's 80 cards actually. And I remembered I had that same feeling some time before. I encountered that. Yes, I did. With the notebooks, with the journals, with the paints, the art supplies. I have it very, very often in my creative journey. And it's um, the thrill of exploring, uh, searching online, ordering the thing, first of all, saving up for the thing, then ordering the thing, and then the mailman comes and brings it over, and then you're just like, oh, a precious new notebook, a precious page that's pristine. Have you ever had that? Like, I have, I had this notebook um, for a couple of months now. I'm still not using it. <laughs> And yeah, as that uh, feeling was familiar to me, I decided to take a similar approach. Uh, first of all, I let myself be intimidated for a while. I left this sitting on my shelf for two days. It's okay. It's not going to run away. I just don't want it to sit there forever because I don't want to collect decks I want to use them or at least explore the art and see if it's for me and then if yes use it if not pass it along so I try to remember what I usually do if it's a new journal if it's something that I'm gonna use like for a journal or a planner in the new year I have to break it in somehow and a long long time ago I watched a video by my life mitts and she said she likes to open a random page in a journal or in a planner and stamp it or put a sticker in it, plop some watercolor, just leave her mark. Once you're in the book, it's yours, it's done, you left your mark. And that's what I usually do. When I get a new notebook or a journal, the first thing I do, I crack it open and I usually decorate the front page. Or I decorate one random monthly section or a weekly section. Or I take my stamps and stamp, stamp, stamp randomly. And then the spreads are started. They are on the beginning of some journey. And then I can go, I can go in and start using it the way I want to use it. And the intimidation of the first page is done. Uh, very similarly with art supplies. If I get new watercolor paints... I simply have to pour them into a palette because if I don't do that, if they stay in the tube, they will be intimidating. The next thing I do, I just make some swatches, make some color bubbles, I don't know, flowers, just sketches, something random, something that's not a project, something that will get the fuel going. So I try that approach with this tarot deck. Uh, going through all 78 cards at once and looking into them and getting a feel for the art might be intimidating. But what I found works for me and I've heard it works for a lot of people. Uh, I follow some channels on YouTube and they do something similar. Uh, for this case it was doable. I edged it. I edged the deck. 
because this deck had white borders, there was no gilding or, or any embellishment or color on the edges. I took it to myself to, um, while the cards were in order, to assign a color to um, each section of the cards. So I chose purple for the major arcana and for the minors. I chose yellow for swords, blue for cups, green for pentacles and a uh, hot pink, something like a hot pink for wands. And I went through the deck card by card and I used my markers, some alcohol based markers and I edged every single card carefully on the edge here. Uh, this is actually, this worked pretty well, some cardstock bleeds or something so it's not tidy but this ended up being really really tidy and when I shuffled the cards I got this fun result it's like a rainbow color edge deck and every time I shuffle it I get a different combination here of course and that was a fun activity it gave me a chance to go through each and every card uh, have a good look at it uh, get a feel for the artwork. This deck is called Tarot of the Abyss by Anna Turian and her work is amazing. Um, I uh, actually fell for this deck surprisingly to me because I'm not into black and white but I guess for this deck now that I have it and I had a chance to really take a good look in the art and not just some pictures online or reviews. Uh, it has a very, very special charm because when you take your time to enjoy the card, you can see uh, that these illustrations are really, they have an intimate feel. Uh, a lot, a lot of the characters here, and I love people on tarot cards or creatures on tarot cards, uh, they look Either they are looking at you or like they are in the room with you. There's the expressions say a lot, at least for me. And I like Anna Turian's art style. And I don't know, it just, it has a certain charm that the black and white, I think if it was in color, it would take away from it, honestly. I believe it would take away from the expressiveness of these lines and the illustration of the characters represented because this way you can I mean look at this beautiful it's a beautiful alternative representation of ten of swords I really like it and yeah so that is what I got from edging the deck a little craft project that took me, I don't know, about an hour to do. Uh, that was the first thing. And now that I got that out of the way and got a feel for the art, the second thing I found works well for me to get a feel of a tarot deck and start actually working with it, is to go through the guidebook, if there is a guidebook. Not all decks have guidebooks. Um, but they are a wonderful addition if they exist. Uh, in this deck you do get it. It is written by the illustrator herself, the uh, Anna Turian. And um, I didn't, of course, read the whole thing because I want to save her interpretations of the cards for when I pull a card. I will, of course, know the overall meaning of the card or the message or the archetype in the card or symbolism. Um, but I want to see, uh, I want to read her take on each card as I pull it. So I'll say I'm saving that experience. What I did uh, read is the introduction and what she talks about spreads and how she uses the cards. And from what I've read here, it highly, highly resonated with me. So it was a fun experience and another layer to add onto this little works of art. The third thing I did, and that works well for me, is do an interview with the deck. So an interview spread can be done a million different ways. I have tried a couple. 
Uh, I have found one spread with six cards and six questions that I used on most of my decks simply to try and I can't say get to know the decks because I'm not talking to a card <laughs> I'm talking to the symbols I'm interpreting the symbols for myself but I guess it's like a fun exercise to either learn the meanings of the cards and get to know them better to get to know the art and to Sometimes it's just for fun. Um, I've read in a book that talked about it's uh, by Benna Belwen, uh, Holistic Tarot. A lot of times she gives suggestions or she talks about why do people use crystals or why do people burn sage or clear the energies and all that stuff. And she said, okay, these are the practices. Why do we do, do them? There's a million reasons. But the most important thing is, if you use crystals and you don't know why you use crystals, you can use them just because they make you happy and have fun with it. So you don't have to uh, be wholeheartedly into anything that someone preaches or teaches. Uh, you can just do some stuff for fun. Um, Rachel Pollack asked the cards uh, how the universe was created. Of course, the universe was not created in a way that the cards were laid out in her spread. But it's a fun question and it's a fun exercise. It's something that helps you derive meaning from maybe something you thought was meaningless and a way to learn something about yourself because the way you will interpret the cards and you will find meaning in them means something to you. It doesn't have to mean to anyone else. And that's the thing. I don't know to explain it better. <laughs> but yeah, that's why I do the interviews. I'm like getting to know the cards. I can read you a couple of questions. This is the interview of my Rider Waite Smith tarot deck so the first question is tell me about yourself what is your most important characteristic or message for me and then I pull a certain card and I interpret it for example here I got the nine of pentacles and my interpretation was I'm not saying it's, it's right but it was my way of interpreting it I am here to encourage you to enjoy the fruits of your labor, even though in solitude. So the Nine of Pentacles in the Rider Waite Smith is a beautiful lady standing alone in a garden full of blooming flowers, fruits, and it re represents abundance. There's a castle in the background, presumably her home. She is the master of the, that castle and of that field and she's very comfortable. But if you zoom into her face, what I saw was a little bit of loneliness. She was alone on the card. She was the master of her estate. She was living in abundance. But I felt the vibe of the card being, okay, I've made it, but I'm lonely. I have all this, whatever that is, Pentacles are usually material, but uh, she has that, for me, she has that little streak of loneliness. And yeah, that resonated for me in a certain, in a certain way. The next question is, uh, what are your strengths as a deck? And I got Eight of Swords. Uh, the Eight of Swords uh, is an image where you're kind of, in a pickle you're trapped but there's a way out you're just not seeing it so not to go into all of these questions and all of these answers this is the way it goes i can read you the questions what are your limits as a deck what are you here to teach me how can i best learn and collaborate with you and what is the potential outcome of our relationship so if, if you listen carefully to these questions i'm not asking a printed um, card I'm basically asking myself, what can I achieve with this practice? 
What is the potential outcome if I use the art as a journaling prompt or a thinking prompt, as a self-reflection prompt? Of course, there are some questions like, what are you here to teach me? The cards won't teach me anything. I can stare at them all day long and I'm not going to learn a thing except maybe some art techniques the artist or the illustrator used to uh, create the deck. Uh, I can only teach myself something new by interpreting the symbolism. So that's my two cents of uh, what I feel like the interview does for me. It does give me a vibe of the overall experience and... No, it doesn't give me a vibe, to be honest. It sets up my own expectations, what I expect to get out of working with these associative cards. So, yeah, because now I have a certain, uh, about this deck, I have a certain expectation that it, that working with it, if I go on and work with it and put in time and effort and uh, self-reflect and journal on it, I might be able to work on this and that. I might be able to figure out something new in this or that department of my spiritual or life overall. So, hope that makes, makes sense. Um, the thing is... Uh, I'm still learning and as I'm talking to you here now, I'm also explaining to myself what exactly is my practice and why and how I'm doing it. So you're with me on this journey with no filters, uh, no editing, no censorship. You're basically witnessing me learning myself. Okay, so, so we came to the Tarot of the Abyss, and again, I did an interview, but this time I felt I want to do it a little bit different. Give me a moment. Sorry, that was my phone. Uh, where was I? Oh, okay. I decided to do the interview a little bit different. Uh, when I went through these cards, I really, really liked the way that uh, Anna Turian um, named and illustrated the Hierophant. The Hierophant is like the Pope or something card. It's like a spiritual leader, but also, you know, when I say Pope or Hierophant, it seems like a person in a certain religious organization, doctrines, tradition, but also spiritual leadership. Like in everything in life, there's the good, there's the bad, of course. Uh, Anna Turian cho chose to go uh, with the card called the Wise One. And she uh, here uh, is more focused on passing on the tradition, being a spiritual leader, or uh, receiving spiritual guidance. Like in our society today, my experience is that. We don't have any more wise aunties or wise grandfathers around or maybe that smart neighbor that you can come over with your heartaches or troubles. We have therapists, we have group therapy, we have a lot of resources, but the wise old man or the wise old woman, uh, I feel that's something that's chronically missing in well, in my society, where I am now. Uh, yeah, and that's why when I saw this card, it highly resonated with me. And I have a lot of feelings about it. Uh, please let me know down in the comments if you have a similar experience. Uh, I don't know if I'm alone in this. Do Am I the only one feeling that where's the wise one in our communities? Where's that person? Uh, we have, of course... Hopefully, we all have friends and family we can confide in. And But I'm not talking here about church or organized religion. I'm talking about that member of the community that can contribute to passing on tradition in a family or in a group and to be the spiritual support or maybe the catalyst for other people in the community to reach some information 
I have a lot of thoughts about this. This is a separate video, but yeah, I chose the wise one as a significator card. A uh, significator card is a card that you choose that represents you or your question and you put it somewhere in the deck, you shuffle the deck. So you put it in, you shuffle the deck as one would, whatever way you like. I like to riffle shuffle. Uh, these cards I found are not, uh, they can be riffle shuffled, but it's not as enjoyable to bridge them as some other decks I have because this is beautiful cardstock. Unfortunately, not matte, but it's not even very shiny. But it doesn't have that. It's a bit too stiff to bridge them like I like to bridge them. Um, when I shuffled the cards, I uh, went in the deck and I went in searching for my wise one. And I found it in the deck. And it was between Justice and before Knight of Cups. Before shuffling or setting my intention, I decided that on the left, my question was, what can you help me work through? Uh, what can you help me understand more from my past? So on the left, past experiences. What can you help me work through? What can I learn from my past? I got the justice. This is my significator. And on the right, uh, what, what can we accomplish together? What can we work towards? And this was my interview spread. This is my intention to work with this deck and the significator card. Justice was on the left, so past. What can we resolve from the past? What can we work towards? And now if you want, I really, I can read you my interpretations. Again, this is just my own vision of the card. And I must say the Justice card is gorgeous. And if you look really closely, you can see the scales in uh, her eyes. And she's looking right at you with that piercing eye. Justice, isn't it appropriate? So for Justice, uh, I wrote down um, that understanding leads to validation and validation can lead to compassion. Uh, justice is adjustment. I really like the name adjustment more so that I noted that. And it's an adjustment to compassion. When you judge yourself or others, have compassion in mind. This is me paraphrasing myself now. Uh, when And now my journaling prompts, which I still have to work through. When in my life have I judged others without compassion? or even myself. Am I able to see the big picture when I judge? Of course not, I'm not able to see the biggest picture always, but maybe one can try. And who am I to judge? These are my journaling prompts with that card. So that is something that this deck or this art prompted me to journal on. Uh, on the right, we have the Knight of Cups uh, okay, channeling emotion, navigating the creative force of emotions. Uh, of course, the suit of cups, it's about emotion. And when you look at the cards, you can see the stirred sea. And this uh, sailor or knight of cups uh, fighting and trying to keep the sails up, navigating the stormy seas. He's using his force. I see force. I see um, action. Uh, he knows what he's doing, he's doing it well, he's doing his best to navigate whatever it is that's happening now at the Sea of Emotions. So, in short, what I wrote. Uh, where in my life can I be more in tune with my emotions and emotions of others? How can I learn to better navigate the, that force and learn to ride the waves? These are my journaling prompts from the tarot cards, from the art to myself. And again, the signi uh, significator, the wise one, is a whole... I could write a book about it, <laughs> but it's a whole other topic. So yeah, uh, from, from this spread, uh, 
an interview of the terror of the abyss uh, i have pages and pages to work on um this is again just a guideline this is something i have been thinking about since yesterday and it's when i pull a card when i get into um interpreting it for myself and thinking of the message from the card i can ruminate but ruminating itself is not substantial the thing is to sit down and write down those thoughts and work through it sometimes when your hand glides on the paper things that come out would not come out in your mind while ruminating on the subject so that's the trick you have to sit down and write people i don't always sit down and write i have spreads i have pulled and i have been circling around those topics in my mind for days and got nowhere and that's i'm not gonna say it's a failure because i started something but it's an unfinished project let's say it's something that i have left behind and i will have to address it again when i find and make the time to sit down at my desk and journal about it on these journal pages uh, things that are here would not come out in my mind's voice because that voice is not me uh, it's when you write you have the ability to go deeper and channel something deeper from within yourself and your mind's voice is a working voice it is here to do its job. It does a wonderful job, but its job is also to protect you. And some stuff that goes out here when your hand is working and with the mechanical activity of writing and focusing of the pen gliding on the page and maybe some other stimuli, your mind shut up, but this gets written down. And when you read it back, Sometimes I'm like, did I write that? Yeah. That was the second phone call that interrupted me. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, okay, writing it down. Yeah, so uh, my experience is that uh, with writing it down and putting it all on paper, you, I got better results. You might not have that experience, but something tells me that if you're here, if you're watching, I bet you probably had that experience. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up. This was, uh, this was uh, what I decided works for me uh, and getting to new a new tool, in this case, a tarot deck. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having a peek uh, in my tarot journal and in my little fun practice here. Uh, you can stay in touch with me over at Instagram. I'm actually more active there than here, but I am making an effort to post more on YouTube and be a part of this community. Thank you for all your comments in the last two videos. Uh, it was really heartwarming to see that maybe the loneliness I was feeling is not so justified. Sometimes you gotta open up and be vulnerable to be able to receive and take away from that loneliness. It's easy to just keep things for yourself and think, oh my God, I'm so lonely. I have no one to share with, but if you do open up to that vulnerability, vulnerability okay. My mouth isn't working. Vulnerability. Did I do it right? Okay. <laughs> so if you uh, actually open up and allow yourself to be vulnerable, there is something beautiful on the other side, as scary it can be. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.